Okay. Can you show the anime lover here? This anime was so. This is the animator here, and I'm here today to give you my review of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Sorry, I'm not showing my face. I feel too lazy after watching all those episodes. And yes, I watched uh, Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid as shorts as well. Anyway, it was so lovely. So many funny moments. I love Kana and Sakura's relationship. I thought Ooh, Ilu would be annoying, but she actually wasn't that bad. And I'm glad she got a job. Yes, I'm reading this off of a script I wrote, but like I said, I'm lazy. Plus, there's a lot to explain. Toru is my favorite character. She just owns who she is. Like, she's strong. She's a good cook. She, she truly learned how to be a mate. <laughs> and her backstory is pretty heavy. I mean, trying to go against gods because she was tired of the way things were happening between dragons and humans. It's like, wow. And like getting, like getting stabbed and almost dying but getting saved by a human who she decides to ser serve for the pretty much the rest of, well... Kobayashi's lifespan, since you know hum humans don't live as long as dragons do. Kobayashi is a drunk, overworker, and into maid outfits, but I love her anyway, and I wish her and Toru had become a couple. Although that wedding ceremony thing that happened in the end of season two, <laughs> that was so funny and ridiculous. <laughs> I wish they had. I wish they had put more into Shota's character besides him being a mage and, you know, kind of being uncomfortable by the way Luca acts. <laughs> it's like that girl is thinking of, uh, that girl really, if she's going to act that way, maybe she, sh maybe she should really think about how Shota acts. <laughs> I mean, how Shota feels. Finny is intense, but I like how he slowly and deeply became an otaku through games and manga, which is truly how I feel. That, that guy was, that guy, at first, he was really intense, but as he slowly became an otaku, he wasn't half bad. Kana is adorable, nice, and she is really she's strong. And that New York episode where she where she met Chloe and helped her get back home. That episode, best episode. Love it. Sakura is nice, doesn't really care about being rich, and is crazy when it comes to Kanya. I mean, every time when she hugs Kanya or does anything with Kanya, I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> Georgie is a good mate, protected, a good kid, and really loves her job. You know, I'm glad that they did show her, because that was nice. I love how Emma is so obsessed with sweets that she and that she is such a hard worker. And her rivalry with Toru, especially her rivalry with Toru. Like, that is the best part of season two, in my opinion. Loga is sweet, but like I said, she seriously needs to think of him when it comes to Shona. But I still love that she cares about him, technically. She actually does want to make him happy, so I'm glad she isn't just doing this just because she wants to. That's half, That's only half the reason. Now, we come to another character, Makoto. He's nice, but, like, there isn't much to him besides that he plays games, gets drunk with Kobe, sorry, Kobayashi, where they're both complaining about made out of it's not really complaining about work or anything, which just goes to show how they feel about that. And I like his friendship with Finny. Oh, and this is the last person. Takiyota. Or just Take. I think I'll just call him Take. He is a character, but like, like, a, like I put in here, he just was added too late. There wasn't really much to add to him besides being supportive to Ilu. Ilu. Sorry, I, I keep messing up her name. Anyway, yeah, there wasn't, mu there wasn't much besides being nice to her. There wasn't, but 
And also trying, you know, not to look like a pervert, obviously. Obviously, but like that's the one thing that I find funny in this show. It's like y'all know that cliche where somebody always falls and touch, and but uh, where the guy falls and then touches the woman's breast by accident. I swear, so many times, the amount of times that every dragon me, every every dragon in this show that is shown as an actual adult has these big breasts. It's just ridiculous, and the amount of times they make fun of how of how big their breasts are is just hilarious <laughs> and i'm glad he, he came around to treating her nice after he figured out she's not suspicious because he thought it was weird that his grandpa just handed her the job anyway hearing about the dragon world it's so intense sheesh and the way they view humans again sheesh you know we aren't all the same i had fun through all that uh, all of this, the good episodes, the okay ones. I don't particularly remember hating any, and I agree with what I wrote. I really don't remember particularly hating a certain episode. Although, season one, woo, woo, that was rough. I, The only moment I hated was the moment where I almost thought Torvald really wasn't going to come back. But, you know, she came back, so I'm happy. Anyway, it was all good. So that's all I have to say. It is a 10 out of 10 for me, and I will definitely watch this again because I have Crunchyroll. If y'all have Crunchyroll, go watch Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid. Listen, I get it. The whole moments they always keep focusing on, you know, really, you know, those moments. Just ignore them. They're only there. They're only there for comedic moments. They're not even there to be bad. It's just comedic. Oh, and by the way, when Finnier first tried to make a manga by using, by using art, <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. You know what would have been more hilarious if they had gathered, like, if they had showed like a bunch of goth people reading it, <laughs> and then they were like, "Where did you come up with the inspiration for that?" Ooh, <laughs> see, that would have been the real cherry on top, but. Eh. I'll get what I can get. Anyway, I hope y'all have a great day. Bye-bye. Kanisha the Anime Lover, signing off.